you join me today on the Upper Trent at Cuttlebrook. As often happens with fishing, things haven't quite gone to plan. We had some heavy rain yesterday and the river's come up a couple of foot and I've had to adapt my stick float tactics. So what I'd like to do today is take you through what these refinements were and also some more general stick float fishing tips. So I'm fishing on the Burton Mutual water and I've selected Peg 29, which as you can see looks absolutely cracking. I've got around about six foot quite close in, just a couple of foot from the bank and it shelves down to around about eight or nine foot and then it's got a pretty steady depth going out to the middle of the river. As normal with uh, my approach on the River Trent, I like to try and feed two lines. So I'll feed an inside line and I'll feed further out for two different reasons really, to try and target different fish and also to allow me to switch between the two and rest a line. But as I mentioned, the river came up almost straight away and the, the further out line's been rendered pretty useless. So I've concentrated on the inside where I've got some steadier water. Initially, I was fishing with these kind of stick floats, which are absolutely perfect when the conditions are normal. So I've got standard stick floats from sort of three number four up to eight number four, depending on the depth that I'm fishing. And typically with those floats, I'd be using um, a shirt button style shotting pattern. So I've got number eights evenly spread out um, and during the session I'll obviously adjust those to suit the conditions. So I might concentrate them in the bottom third of the line. I might have a reverse shotting pattern to give me a slower drop or I might bulk the shot up. But unfortunately this, uh, this rig didn't prove heavy enough. As soon as the river started to come up it became quite boily and difficult to fish with a lighter float. So I had to change over to a, to a heavier style float, such as these. And the float that's fished best has been 12 number four. And you'll notice that these are all wire stem and they've got a shoulder. So what that does is it provides some great stability in these boily swims. I've also had to alter the shotting pattern and by far the best rig today has been a bolt rig, so you can see I've got something like 20 number 8s all bolted together. I've got 3 or 4 number 8s and a couple of number 10s spread out below it. And the objective with that is that I can get the bait down to where the fish are feeding and still have a nice presentation once the, once the bait's down in that sort of 2 foot zone. I've got quite a long hook length and that's something that's really important. Most of the time when I'm stick float fishing, I don't like to have dropper shot too close to the hook. And again, I just think it gives the bait a much improved presentation by doing that. So that's the rigs. Um, the rods I've used, I've set up a, a 13 foot and a 15 foot Super T match rod. The 15 foot rods proved really useful today, obviously with the increased depth. Um, and it's also enabled me to really slow the float down. So I've been able to get behind the float and slow it down and really improve the presentation. Today's a day when I've really had to slow that bait down in order to get any bites at all. Um, I've set up a variety of different reels. This is a 40 size super team front drag. And I've also set up on my lighter rig, um, the Abu 506, which is a reel I really like when I'm stick float fishing and catching small roach and dace quickly. So that's the actual rods and reels. Um, when it comes to the terminal tackle, I've kept, even though the river's come up, I've still kept the rig and the hook length relatively fine. The main line on my heavier stick is this uh, 017 Trilene XL float, which breaks at four pound. So it's a robust line. It's one that floats very well and it balances up with my hook length well because it's got plenty of stretch. And the hook lengths I've used is um, 08 and 010 Berkeley XWR and the hooks are my favourite Camasan B560s in a size 20 and an 18. For single maggot I've been using the 20 and for double maggot I've been using the 18. I find them to be a really strong and sharp hook 
um, in all but the most extreme conditions. So if I'm roach and dace fishing, I really like fishing with the B560s. Okay, so let's have a look at the feeding. So obviously as the rivers come up with the flood water, the pace has increased. And with this tree, actually, I'm quite confined. It's, it's become quite a short peg. So I've actually fed two spots on this inside line. I've been feeding maggots just very frequently with 10 or 20 maggots slightly just upstream of me here because I want to ensure that those maggots are getting down to the bottom before I get to that tree. Otherwise I fear that the maggots might be getting washed away and I can't actually present my bait where the maggots are landing. And then I've also been feeding not a great amount but maybe um, 20 grains of hemp and 10 or 20 casters less frequently maybe every two or three casts and I've been feeding that a little bit further downstream. That's because I think the hemp's going to sink quicker and hit the same spot as the maggots that I'm feeding upstream. So even though I'm feeding in two different places, I'm looking to catch the fish in one zone just above the tree. On, um, on better days when the fish are feeding harder, you can obviously draw the fish further up the peg. But today, they've nearly all been caught down towards that tree. So let's do some more fishing now and I'll give you an insight into what I'm actually trying to achieve with this heavier stick float rig. When I'm stick float fishing I always like to cast the float or drop the float in just slightly downstream of me. This helps me immediately by putting the line behind the float so I'm in control of the float straight away. It's actually very difficult to achieve that if you're fishing straight in front of you. So that's just another thing to think about when you're fishing the stick. Now, as I mentioned, this float being 12 number four and with the bulk rig is allowing me to really slow the bait down. I'm probably putting the float through around about half the pace of the river. And I'm doing that for a couple of reasons really. One, because I don't think the fish are really feeding that well. They've been put off by this cold influx of water and I think they're pretty much staying stationary on the bottom and picking up the odd bait as it comes past them. They're not actively feeding and coming up in the water. So by having this bolt rig, as I mentioned, I'm being able to get the bait down into that killing zone and present the bait effectively. Also, it's probably worth mentioning that I think with all stick float fishing, the great advantage of using a stick float is that by sl slowing the bait down, you're actually presenting the bait at the correct speed on the bottom because the pace of the water or the speed of the current on the bottom of the river, on the riverbed, is lower or slower than the, the speed at the top. So the stick float allows you to ease it through and slow the bait down. So I'm actually achieving slowing this rig down by controlling the speed of line that's coming off the real spool and also by slowly moving the rod down at the speed I want. So it's like a a dual effect really and it's something that takes some practice but if you can master will really improve your catches. So you can see that I'm just, I don't need to cast the rig out, I'm just lowering it into position and I'm sweeping the rod back and then slowly controlling the float down. Now you, you don't want to have the line tight to the float so that it's actually lifting the float out of the water. What you're actually doing is controlling say the foot or two foot of line above the float. And that's just enabling me to slow the float down nicely. It really depends on the conditions. If it's really pacey, then you can actually start to control the, the speed of the float by running it through your fingers, as some people like to do. And, and also actually even backwinding the, the reel and the float down the peg, which is a fantastic skill to have. Um, and I do employ that on some days, but I like this mixture of moving the rod down with the float and also releasing the line under some tension. So in order to keep the bait 
in the zone and present it correctly, I'm actually having to fish slightly over depth. I've gone between six inches and a foot over depth today because obviously if I put the brakes on and hold the float back, it's going to pull, even with this heavier bulk, it's going to pull the bait off the bottom. Now, actually that is an advantage as well. And every cast, I'll try and do that. I'll try and hold the bait back and then let it go. And what that does is it lifts the bait off the bottom and then very naturally the bait will fall back down. And, and what can happen is you'll find in, the, in, in your peg there's different areas and if you can find where the fish are, I always like to just hold it back just before I get to where I think the fish are and then control it back down again and you often get rewarded by a bite straight away. On a day like this, well, I say when the fish are maybe not as active and pretty much pinned on the bottom, it's almost like you've got a killing zone in your peg where that float is now, just before I get to the tree. So it's been quite difficult really, because as the river's come up and the pace has increased, I felt that the fish were getting almost, not washed away, but following the bait away from where I could fish. So what I've done is I've employed a bait dropper, which is absolutely fantastic addition to your armory when you're fishing on a river. This medium sized bait dropper, every sort of half an hour, or if the bites have tailed off, I've given it a couple of bait droppers of maggots. And on a couple of occasions, I've been rewarded by a quick flurry of fish. So I'll just try it now and we'll see if we can um, make it work. So what this bait dropper will do is it will deposit a good amount of maggots or whatever I want to put in it, be it hemp and castors, maggots or whatever, right on the bottom in exactly the spot where I want it. Obviously those maggots or some of them will wash down further as well, but it will concentrate the maggots in one area in my swim. And it does that by this lever here. So I'll show you. Once this, if I lower it down to the bottom, the bait dropper hits the bottom and releases all the maggots. So we'll give it a quick go here. And what I've been doing is you'll notice I'm not putting this down the bottom of the swim. I'm uh, putting it just a rod length or so low, lower down in the peg on the line that I'm fishing, and I'm just lowering it down to the bottom. There you go. And we'll see if that works. So as the session's progressed today, it's, it's been quite challenging because of this increase, this influx of water. And I think one of the worst things about it is the color. It's not a bad color, but there's a lot of sediment in the water. And I think that pretty much nearly always knocks the fishing on the head on most rivers. So it's certainly proved a tough day. But one thing, one good tip I'd like to give you is I find that red maggots work really well in coloured waters. I mean, I always use, when I'm fishing maggots on the river, bronze maggots with a few reds in. But today, as a hook bait, a red maggot has definitely outfished the bronze. So it's just a good tip to bear in mind if you're fishing in conditions where the water's coloured like this. So you can see that fish was in the killing zone I was talking about, just above the tree. And um, they're not big fish. That's a roach around about four or five ounces, but they're absolutely beautiful fish. Fin perfect, I don't think they've been caught before. So I've been asked before about the position of this shot when you stick float fishing. And as I mentioned, I always like to use, apart from on the biggest stick floats, like 16 number four, I like to use number eight shots. So I might have up to 30 number eight shots on the line, which sounds like a real pain, but I believe it, it helps me in many ways. Um, one of the key reasons is the fact that um, number eight shot, you can still use lead in the UK. And obviously um, that means that the shot are softer um, and heavier for the given size if you compare them to a non-toxic lead. So that's one of the reasons why I like to use lead. The other reason is that having so many shots on the rig gives me so many different permutations with how I can present the bait. So today I've bulked all, my, all of the shot down to perhaps, I don't know, two and a half foot from the hook. And um, as you can see, I've got these number eights and number tens spread out below. Now, one thing that you might notice is that when I'm fishing a stick float or pretty much any float, you're constantly adjusting this shotting pattern. Not only in conjunction with the changing of the depth, 
because just by making subtle changes on these shots, maybe by doubling up the number eights, for example, can affect how that bait behaves in the water and could be better on a given day or a given moment. And so many times, particularly on the River Trent, I find when you make a change, you're rewarded by a couple of fish. So it's a busy method, and I think that's a really key tip to think about. I think on some days like this, when conditions are harder, you've almost got to realise that the fish want to be where they want to be. So I can't manipulate them and move them. Um, obviously, if the fishing was more prolific and the fish were feeding more actively, I'd be trying to get them into an area that's more efficient to catch. But today, I simply can't move them away from that one area. Um, and I'm just having to be content with that and just keep picking fish off and adjusting my rig and adjusting the feeding. I did have a spell where I tried to fish further out and even though the float went through very well and I could present it, I just simply wasn't catching. I've also tried closer in. Many times on a, on a flooded river or when the rivers come up, you can catch really close into the bank. But on this swim today, there's a lot of debris or snags on the bottom and I'm not able to run the float through cleanly. So basically, I'm, I've selected a spot where the fish have told me where they are, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep persisting with that spot. As I mentioned, it's a busy method in terms of the rigs that you're using and how you're presenting the bait. But the most important thing's got to be feeding. And I'll be feeding certainly once a cast, but sometimes two, three, four, five times a cast. Because what I'm trying to do is, by feeding a little and often, um, attract the fish to where I'm feeding without overfeeding them. Obviously, if I was feeding very heavily on a day like today, I'm sure to overfeed the fish and I'll probably stop catching. So I'm just kind of nursing the swim along just by feeding three, four, five, six maggots every cast. Normally, I like to try and feed with my float and draw the float into the feed so that I feel that I'm maybe fooling the fish by putting my hook bait in amongst the, in amongst the loose feed. It's a bit difficult today because I'm having to actually feed upstream of me. Um, again, if, if the fishing was more prolific, I'd try and feed downstream of me so that I can maximise where I'm putting the float and running it through with the, with the feed. Um, at the moment, single maggot's better. But earlier on, I had a spell where I caught some nicer roach on a double maggot. So again, that's another thing to think about is actually fishing single or double maggot. And for roach, I do like to fish a double maggot on a size 18. And I feel that the 20 with a single maggot just gives me, you know, a, a better presentation and more bites. So, as I mentioned, I'm fishing around about eight foot deep. And um, that's what really helps me is the length of the rod that I'm using. So in this case, this 15 foot rod is basically allowing me to almost run the float down off the rod end, which really helps with presentation. I mentioned that I'm controlling the one foot or two foot above the float. That's what I'm controlling or what we call mending the line. So I'm keeping that line behind the float so I can slow it down and also achieve that good presentation without a, a bow or the wind blowing the float off course unnaturally. And then um, one simple piece of tackle that I just simply wouldn't be without when I'm stick float fishing or float fishing to that matter on the river is this uh, mousseline. She's like um, a Vaseline, a silicon, that I treat to that top two foot above the float and that ensures that it floats very, very well. So that's a really key tip for stick float fishing on rivers. So I'm gonna call it a day now. I've had around about seven or eight pound of these dace and roach and a few bleak. Although I've caught nothing massive, I've really enjoyed it today. We've had to adapt to the conditions, but I think it proves what, by being flexible in terms of your rigs and your feeding, can be achieved on a river, even when it comes up like two foot like it did today. So please don't hesitate to drop me an email if you've got any questions relating to stick float on rivers. Thanks for watching.